Cuphead is Studio MDHR Entertainment's first game, but looking at it, you'd never guess. The hand-drawn backgrounds, the smooth run-and-gun gameplay, the fun levels and platforming, the incredible jazz soundtrack. All of these factors come together to create one of the best games to have graced consoles and PCs in a long time. It's been a long road for Cuphead, which was first shown at E3 2014. The game was estimated to be almost halfway done then, but we would still need to wait over three years for its release. This means that the game's development time ended up being around six or seven years in total. A long time, but I think it was well worth it. When people discuss the run and gun genre, games like Contra, Metal Slug, and Mega Man often come up. Cuphead is clearly inspired by the most popular games of this genre. If you love any of these games, you'll find Cuphead to be like an old friend you haven't seen in a while. You access the game's many stages from the overworld, and you often have several options. If you get frustrated with one boss, you can take a break and try another. While the game has plenty of traditional platforming levels, the core emphasis is on boss battles. Cuphead thrusts you right into the action, and it's up to you to observe, learn the patterns of bosses, and utilize your tools to win. Many of Cuphead's run and gun conventions are taken straight from other games in the genre, such as 8-way aiming, the ability to change weapons on the fly, and a two-player co-op mode. There are some unique things here as well. For example, parrying, the ability to jump off and nullify neon pink objects, projectiles, or enemies, and EX shots, powerful attacks that you build up by doing damage and parrying. When you save up a full set of EX cards and you have one unlocked and equipped, you can also use super arts. Though there are only three in the game, they can be useful. There are also charms in the game, and you can only equip one. What charm you equip is important, because these all increase your survivability. I prefer the Smoke Bomb, a charm that gives you invincibility when you dash. Aside from charms, there are also plenty of weapons in the game for you to utilize. From low damage rapid fire weapons, to a charge shot that deals big damage but demands greater accuracy. The game gives thorough players a lot of options early on, so you can choose to play the game in a way that suits your style. Several of the stages in Cuphead take on a horizontal shoot 'em up approach, reminiscent of games like Gradius. These are pleasant distractions from the game's usual boss battles. Some elements of the usual gameplay remains, like switching weapons and EX shots, though these stages demand a greater emphasis on dodging while still dealing damage. The tools you're given are sufficient enough to breeze through a lot of these levels, but they're still just as challenging as the rest of the game. Speaking of challenging, it's worth mentioning that Cuphead is an unforgiving game, and it's likely you'll die a lot. This is intentional, a very retro slash arcade kind of difficulty that can be very punishing at times. If you're the kind of person who is easily flustered by constant failure, have poor situational awareness, or have difficulty recognizing and memorizing patterns, this game may not be for you. For those of you who are persistent enough to learn from each death and find your way to victory, then this is a good game for you. There's no greater feeling than knowing that you took on each challenge and succeeded. The developers crafted the world of Cuphead around old 30s cartoons, labeling the animation of the time as strange, subversive, and surreal. If you've ever had the chance to watch some of these older cartoons, you'll realize what the developers were aiming for in terms of visuals. Every level, enemy, and boss fight is faithful to the animation style of the time. Backgrounds are interesting and active, but not distracting. Foreground elements add greater depth to most stages. Bosses in their varying forms are well-drawn and creative. The game's soundtrack is crafted and orchestrated with obvious love for the era, inspired by one of the most prevalent kinds of music to come out of the 1930s, jazz. Not just jazz, but swing and big band. There are elements of all of these in the OST, but compare old-fashioned jazz of the 30s with the kind of jazz recorded for Cuphead. You'll probably notice that the game's tracks have an overall faster tempo. Cuphead is a fast-paced game, so it makes sense that the music would also have a faster pace than your average 30s jazz track. Of course, no game is perfect, and even Cuphead has a few blemishes. The biggest issue I can see with Cuphead is the absence of online multiplayer. Couch multiplayer is a nice addition to any game that has multiplayer elements, 
But in an era where most people play their games online, the inability to connect with friends or random players for two-player shenanigans is a glaring omission in a game that demands it. I hope they patch it in later, or at least add it to an inevitable sequel. There are also a lot of stages in the game that incorporate foreground elements in a distracting way. They obscure hazardous stage elements, enemy projectiles, or can break your focus. Having said that, most foreground elements are incorporated in a tasteful way, so this is more of a nitpick than anything else. Another issue I had with the game is that most of the weapons and their appropriate EX attacks weren't very useful. From the mid to late game, doing as much damage in the shortest possible time frame becomes a key element of gameplay. For much of the second half of the game, I used the charge and chaser weapons because these got the job done the easiest. Charge did amazing burst damage, while Chaser helped me handle low health minions or let me deal continuous damage to bosses while avoiding tricky obstacles. I dabbled a little in the other weapons, but found that Charge and Chaser covered all the bases no matter the fight. Charms and Super Arts had a similar problem in terms of overall usefulness. I never saw a need to utilize any charm beyond the smoke bomb which, as I said previously, offered invulnerability while dashing. The other charms offered a free parry or increased your health, both of which are crutches for struggling players. I found it more logical to have a charm that gave me on-demand invulnerability, even if only for a moment, and it came in handy in numerous boss fights. I would have been tempted to use a double jump charm, if one existed, which felt like a missed opportunity. As for supers, they also felt pretty bland, like they existed only to benefit less confident players. I didn't feel compelled to use any of the others. Finally, parrying is an interesting addition to the game, demanding skilled gameplay to gain the ability to deal more damage. It's not perfect though. Nothing killed the flow of a battle more for me than losing my charge shot in order to parry a projectile or enemy. It's not a huge deal, but it feels like it was either intentional to counterbalance the power of charge as a weapon, or an oversight. If it's the latter, I'd love to see it fixed. Cuphead is one of the best run and gun games I've ever had the pleasure of playing, in terms of gameplay, soundtrack, and visuals. I wouldn't be surprised if Cuphead joined its peers when the discussion of the genre arose. While it may be difficult and seemingly impossible at times, the game is not an obstacle that I couldn't eventually surmount, and I clocked in around 8 hours of gameplay. What's more, the game is only $20 as of this review, and I think that that's an incredibly fair price to ask from gamers looking for a fun challenge. The developers have also promised expansion packs in the future, and if the content contained in the expansions is as amazing as what's in the base game, these additions should prove to be a real treat for us. Remember kids, it's good to share! If you enjoyed this review, hit subscribe, then let your friends know about it. There's also links to the official Chunky Beef Twitter, Twitch, and Minds pages down below in the description, so you can keep track of what's going on. See you next time.